In this video, we are going to cover two of the most incredible Austin Rover cars that were a preview of what was to come from the MG and Rover mark. One was a supercar capable of 170 mile per hour that was supposedly almost ready for production, based on technology bred for the Metro 6R4 rally car, but it was unfortunately cancelled before it left the motor show circuit. The other was a much needed addition to the Rover 800 lineup, a car that would show the world what the future of the brand was. That's right, in this video, we are gonna be exploring the MG EXC and the Rover CCV. This has really been an interesting one to research because there is not a lot known about the development history of these two cars. So I've tried to piece together as much as possible and as much information as I could. And thanks to the British Motor Museum, I've seen them both in person because they're both preserved there. I've even been inside the Rover CCV, so there'll be some exclusive footage of that coming up. Now, make sure to subscribe to the video, drop me a like, and let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you think the CCV, the Rover 800 Coupe, would have been a success if it had been released earlier? Do you think it would have changed the fortunes of the Sterling in the US? Do you think the MG EXE would have given the MG brand a much needed shot in the arm, a much needed reputation boost at the time? Because it was only at the time that this, that this car was um, proposed, it was only on the um, M cars, the Metro, Maestro and Montego. So without further delay, without further waffling, let's get into the video. Naturally, we'll start with the first to debut, the MG EXE. This project was initiated to show the automotive world and the public at large that MG could move away from its past and be modernised without desecrating its brand. The car was a phenomenal showcase of Austin Rover's design talents, led by the then lead designer, Roy Axe, who headed up the project. It is largely believed that the EXE was a simple fiberglass mock-up. However, this is not the case. The EXE is a full motorsport-bred concept car, engineered to take the Metro 6R4's engine, looking to the future of car design and technology that Austin Rover hoped it could become a leader in. Looking past the shapes and styles of the roads of the 1980s to the future of motoring, making this project part of the Advanced Design Project series of cars. The EXE was hot on the heels of the success of the MG Metro 6R4 rally car and looked to utilise its specially developed V6 engine, which was specifically developed for that car. Its screaming 6-cylinder, 3-litre, 24-valve power plant saw the Metro becoming a mainstay of Group B until the class was banned because of safety concerns. Austin Rover wanted to capitalise on this design and engineering work and this one-off drivetrain by creating a road car based on this technology, developing it into what would be MG's first supercar. The Austin Rover engineering team, with the help of some computers, predicted that the car would have a top speed of 170 miles an hour and a 0-60 to 60 time in under 5 seconds, hot on the heels of the fastest car in the world of the time, which was a Lamborghini, which is completely unheard of in the octagonal world of MG. The design of the car was based on a cross between an F-16 fighter jet and a Ferrari 308, which Roy Axe, the design director, owned at the time. Not the fighter jet, the Ferrari. With a Lotus Esprit owned by Austin Rover Group product planner Tony Burton for dimensional reference loaned to the team. The team then worked closely with Spen King's team at the experimental department at Gaydon for fine tuning to the 6R4's chassis. Richard Hamblin was the lead designer of the interior and Jerry McGovern of later MGF fame helped design the exterior. In Roy's own words, it was a real team effort. This car was a technical marvel for the time, a drag coefficient of 0.24, a bonded aluminium space frame, a glass canopy with integrated Targa panels, digital instrumentation to show the driver only the most relevant information based on the situation at the time. The proposed equipment read like a modern car's option list, designed to have active suspension, parking sensors and a heads up display as well as remote central locking. The MG EXE was then unveiled at the 1985 Frankfurt Motor Show. The press reception was so universally positive that the idea of a production EXE was proposed internally, but sadly management saw limited chance on this model being a financial success. And the MG wasn't exactly a name that one would associate with supercars in the mid-1980s. 
after being pinned to the bonnets of rubber bumpered MGBs. The extra development costs, marketing and limited chance of the success of the car meant the EXE was not destined for the road. The MG EXE is seen as somewhat of a prelude to the XJ220 which shares the same base engine, although the Jaguar JR V6 was a bored out version with turbochargers added. The MG EXE now resides in the British Motor Museum at Gaydon and is proudly on display. If you look at the front you can even see a steering rack. Let me know what you think this might be from. The Rover CCV or Coupe concept vehicle is a story of magnificent car making and stolen thunder. The Rover CCV was another coupe which debuted the year after the MG EXE which had drawn significant admiration from the motoring press and public. The CCV was a show of what was to come for the anticipated Rover SD1 replacement, the Rover 800, codenamed XX internally. The Rover 800 was due to be launched in July of 1986 in both Europe and later in North America. Austin Rover wanted to see if the public really wanted a coupe, so Roy Axe and his team were tasked with creating a concept close to what a production Rover 800 coupe would look like. The car created by Roy Axe and his team was an incredibly stylish car, with a lot of the production line features tying it to the rest of Rover's lineup, the slit light grille and the slim headlights surrounding it. The coupe was clearly related to the 800 saloons as well, in Royax's own words, it picked up the character of the 800 in terms of basic form and character lines. The car had several advancements inside, such as solid state instrumentation, a car phone, vertical CD player, and a car system diagnostic panel. You can even see some of the production Rover 800 elements, such as the dash which has been slightly modified, and the buttons for the seat adjustment. The car was unveiled at the Turin Motor Show in 1986, with the press both at home and abroad particularly excited about the car, with many North American dealers supposedly taking on Sterling franchises in the hope that there would be a production model. After the Rover 800's launch in Europe and the Sterling's launch in the USA, the interest was still there from the car buying public, with Austin Rover seriously investigating the prospects of a production car. However, the poor sales of Sterling's in the US meant management was not willing to commit the company to developing it further. Austin Rover and its fledgling Sterling brand were dealt another blow when Honda launched its Legend Coupe in the US, beating them to launch. A refusal to commit by Austin Rover and the misjudged launch of the Sterling in the US led to the CCV being shelved, with an 800 coupe not coming until the 1992 model year in its R17 or Mark II form. The Rover CCV was repainted in burgundy for some unknown reason and then painted back in its original silver and is now on display in the British Motor Museum, a building away from its brother, the EXE. These two cars surely do prove one thing to me, and I hope to you, that the British motor industry at the time was really forward thinking, and it proves that the, the teams at Canley and at Gaydon were really, really ahead of the curb. Now, these two cars have some incredibly sort of prophetic specs, um, like, you know, the automatic windscreen wipers of the EXE and the um, radar cruise control of the EXE as well. The vertical CD player, I don't think that would have caught, um, caught on in the CCV, but it certainly is an interesting feature. If you're into old computers, the 20th anniversary of Macintosh has a vertical CD player, and that is almost like another pr future preview, um, but that's computers, it's not cars. Um, the other interesting thing about the CCV is when, I, when the um, British Motor Museum let me have a look inside of it, it has a little dial pad, almost like a rotary phone on the on the dash which is super duper interesting it really is an incredible car and i really do wish they made a mark one or xx rover 800 coupe because that would have been an amazing car and i think that would have changed the fortunes for sterling in the us at least its image anyway of course there was build quality issues there was a few other issues at the time um but the honda legend beating them one to launch the saloons and two to launch the coupe was really the death nail they needed and with you know all the motoring magazines you know exposing or you know letting the public know this is just a honda legend essentially um this new brand not the um of course the rover brand because it was a sterling over there but it really did really did ruin it um and of course 
the Sterling was a massive flop, and it was Austin Rovers um, and Rovers' last failure in the US. So they really did sort of kill their kill their um, their expansion hopes, their hopes to break the mold in the new market and gain new customers overseas. Now the the EXE that probably wouldn't have been a success. That would have come out as a bit of an oddity, sold a few, and then <laughs> it would have been incredibly weird. It certainly wasn't as flashy as the supercars of the time, but gosh damn, it was elegant, and it was pretty amazing. Um, like I've said in the previous part of the video, a lot of people do see that as a precursor um, to the XJ220. The XJ220, if you, you probably already know this, um, it was its concept was the V12, and then it moved to the JRV6, which is essentially a um, V6V, which is the Metro 6R4 engine, and that engine is quite is based on the Rover V8, I believe, loosely based on that. So, just an interesting lineage, and I think the EXE is one of those cars that not a lot of people know about, and it is proudly on display in the British Motor Museum. Sadly, with these cars, there isn't a lot of history on the development because, of course, they are just concept cars. But it's really been exciting to put this one together, and I really do hope you've enjoyed it. Now, this video will probably be out on Christmas Eve, so have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate, enjoy it, have a restful time. I certainly am going to, because I've had that flu that everybody's had. And thank you for watching. Keep watching. I'll see you in the next one. And... That is going to be a special one, so make sure to subscribe for more of that.